Hey everybody, today I want to talk to you about the five best practice tips you can use while doing e-learning. Now, tip number one is going to be be confident, right? So being confident is going to instill confidence within your students. Unfortunately, they didn't sign up for this kind of style of learning right now because of an emergency situation. So if you can exude confidence, it's going to put them a little more at ease about this new learning process that they'll have to go through. One of the best ways to do that is never, ever, ever apologize for being online. Once you apologize for being online, what's going to happen is those students are going to see that they, uh, they shouldn't be okay with this and that you are not prepared enough to do this. So we want to avoid that as much as possible. And it's important to remember that the first few times that you do a distance learning style class, it's going to be very shaky, especially for these kids who have never really experienced an online blended learning environment like this. So understanding that and just helping them work through problems is going to instill uh, levels of critical thinking that they will need later on as they go throughout this distance learning process. All right, tip number two is designing your course. Now, I know you already have all of your courses ready to go, but those are courses that you teach in person. When you teach a course online, things are going to be a little bit different and you're going to need to make adjustments. So it's very important that you reevaluate what you're teaching and check out what those goals and objectives are. When you have those goals and objectives set, it's going to give you a clear direction on how you need to proceed for e-learning. And then once you have them set, determine how you're going to assess those goals and objectives. It's critical that you understand that assessing those goals and objectives is going to be a little different than what it would be within a traditional classroom setting. All right, tip number three, your content is key. On average, you want to be looking at keeping about 10 to 15 minutes as your normal teaching time. The reason for that is, well, that's the actual content you cover within a classroom setting. Everything else is just built around uh, classroom management for the most part, or people ask questions and then uh, during the lesson. So you really have about 10 to 15 minutes of core content. So understanding that allows you to perfect your delivery method a little bit more. It's also to remember that bite size is important. Bite size chunks, right? If your content is going to be taking longer than 30 minutes, like straight content that you're pushing to students is longer than 30 minutes, you need to break that up into multiple sessions and there's some good research behind that the brain because of TV is trained to be able to focus and consume about 10 to 15 minute chunks of information before needing a two minute break so if we're able to break up our content online then that's going to help students process that a little bit better next less is more right this this is important so if you're giving your students giant like blocks of text, right? Huge blocks of text, 12 point font, they're going to check out immediately. So if you can increase that font size, break down those texts or those paragraphs, and then if you can utilize videos and audio uh, and images with it, uh, that's even better. If you can e create your own, that's what you should be looking at going for. Tip number four, intrinsic motivation is going to tank with your students, right? This is a learning environment that they didn't sign up for, so they're already going to be coming into this, finding it as a potentially useless waste of time for them. We need to try and overcome that. So if you notice when a student is absent, make sure you contact, uh, contact them immediately after uh, the class has ended, right? It'll let them know that you're monitoring to see when they're going to be within a classroom setting. And on top of that, Right? It's going to show that you care and notice that they're gone. If you can't contact them via email or they're not responding, go take it one step further. Call their parents, call their house, see what's going on there. And maybe there's a very good reason as to why they're, uh, they're not attending class. Okay? Also, we need to make accommodations for students who can't make those live streams. It's going to happen, especially in this environment. A child might have to go to work. They don't have access to the internet at their parents' work things like that happen. So using Google Meet allows you to record your lesson. Make sure you are posting that recording into that Google Classroom afterwards. That's going to allow the student to then go and access that information and then maybe attach onto it like um, do a quick discussion post. Give me three things you took away from the lesson. Something like that to make it easier. 
but really we need to be working at finding ways to keep our students motivated while working and one of the one of the best ways to do that is through engaging assessments using things like Kahoot which can be done remotely Nearpod uh, discussion posts within Google Classroom itself and even Google Slides has a presenter option which you can take a look at in another video that I have Tip number five, create a feedback culture. When you create a feedback culture, that's going to show that you're taking the time to look at what every student is saying and responding to it, and they're going to feel like their voice is being heard within, uh, well, within a situation where they might not feel like that. What's also a good thing about this when you're modeling feedback your students have a model to work with at that point as well. So then have students start using your model of feedback to fee give feedback to others. Uh, you're going to find that what would take maybe two, three seconds within a traditional classroom setting is going to take potentially minutes to get done. So if you can build a feedback culture where students are giving appropriate and good feedback, positive feedback, constructive feedback to other students, then that is going to be highly beneficial. Now the other thing, and this is tip six here that you may not may not have noticed, but you want to try and find the least distracting environments possible. If you have, you know, things going on in the background, those are going to be distracting your students, and you want to try and minimize those distractions as much as possible. In fact, if you want to have some fun with it, call, call it out, because, um, you know, the kids will enjoy it, you'll enjoy it, and it's a good break from the rhythm of a traditional uh, content delivery system. All right, if you found this video helpful, please please let me know by hitting that like button if you're watching this on YouTube. And if you have other best practices for e-learning, please make sure you put those in the comment section below or uh, email them out or add them onto the document where you can view all of this stuff at the same time. Thanks for watching.